there, this is Ken Schultz, and today I'm going to talk about the humble flower. So what I want to give you in this short video, I don't want to go on too long, I just really want to talk about flower photography. And I want to give you four reasons why I think flower photography is fabulous. So I've done a lot of flower photography through my training and from my Easy DSLR course to my current DP Insiders program. I do cover flower photography a lot through the different lessons, but they're not. I don't necessarily have a module specifically on flower photography. And I do want to talk about flower photography here, and I am going to reference a book by Fotzi, which is a new book that they came out on flower photography, and it's by a trainer called Leanne. And I think that her, she has a really interesting approach because she's actually a teacher, and she really breaks down some advanced concepts and makes it really accessible for pretty much anyone. So now a lot of people think okay flower photography is kind of overdone and there's even some photographers who think that you know if you just take flower photography or you take photos of flowers then somehow that you're not a purist or something. But I, I love flower photography to be honest and there's a lot of reasons I love flower photography and reason number one I think it's just very pleasing to the eye. You know, flowers, they just, they beautiful. You know, if you want to take photos that are beautiful, then flowers are a really natural subject. You know, they have a lot of connotations with hope and love. You know, people give people flowers on Valentine's Day or just as a present generally because it's, you know, it's very pleasing to give someone flowers. They just give you hope. They got vibrancy. They, and it's just the colors and the shapes and it's just a very pleasant thing. So, you know, seeing flowers popping up in spring you know you've been through a, a dull winter and suddenly you see the bulbs start popping actually I'm going to show you some photos later which I took today I actually took earlier today we we're just starting to have some bulbs popping up I'll show you a couple of test shots I did so it really gives you that feeling of renewed life and seasons as the spring flowers bloom as well as all the spring blossoms on the trees you get all the cherry blossoms i love flower photography i like seeing beautiful flowers and i think you know taking nice flower photos to share with friends and family is a great thing so that's my first point so this is just a cross section of photos i've taken through the years this is just a small sample i just thought i'd pick out some samples to talk about today real quick but um, one of the things that strikes you too is color. It's You get such a variety of colors when you take flower photos. So it's a wonderful way of expressing your photography through all sorts of different colors and contrasts of colors. Now the other side, point two, point two for flower photography is it's very accessible. So you, if you want to take beautiful photos and you want to have a subject and you want to be able to really get some amazing shots and have one of the most patient subjects out there then flowers are the way to go and you don't have to pay lots of money to hire a model or anything you can go literally to your flower store you can buy some even if it's not seasonal in your area even if you have, don't have a garden if you're in an apartment building or you don't have a garden and you don't have flowers blooming because maybe it's in the middle of winter you can literally go to a store and just buy a bouquet and try out some flower photography so as far as accessibility it's you know it's a very accessible subject so it's very easy to just get hold of some flowers or go out there and find some flowers and just get some wonderful shots now point three now point three is is really about learning and practicing the essentials so in all my training i i talk about the photo triangle it's one of the first things i introduce and it's my way of summarizing the key points of photography which is basically framing or which is composition and lens choice and then we have the light corner which is exposure and color and the various things associated with getting the correct lighting in your image and then finally focus and that's like what's in focus what's out of focus and all the associated settings with focus in your photos and clarity in your photos so now the nice thing is is those are the basics that I teach and I teach you the essential settings and concepts just to really give you a fast track into your photography into knowing those basics and practicing those basics 
Now, the beauty is flowers provide a great subject just to practice and learn those basics because a lot of the essential concepts that you need as well as more advanced concepts can be all learned and practiced on flower photography. So that's a wonderful thing too. Just for example, things like composition. You can look at, like for instance here, this is a, a daisy shot I took. And I have this daisy on the golden mean line. So if you see, there's actually like about a golden mean line there and a golden mean line. It's kind of in from the thirds. So this is an example of placing your subject on particular composition lines. So that's something you can totally practice with flowers. You can try symmetry, you can try space, and all sorts of different composition guidelines to try out. And it really gives you a fast track to be able to test those out and start learning composition from simple to more advanced concepts. And then, of course, we look at things like exposure. Now, this is an example of exposure where you have fairly direct light on the flower. So you can start looking at light quality, for instance. In my DP Insiders course, I dedicate a whole month to light quality. And this was from one of the lessons, actually. And this is basically direct light. And I was talking about transmitted light or direct light and diffuse light and all sorts of kind of lighting. And this one is actually reflective light. So when it's directly on your subject, you've got light reflecting straight off your subject. That's reflective light. And then in other situations, you might have light coming through your subject. And that'll be like this example, same field, same day, but now I'm just taking a different position where I'm behind the flowers with the sun on the other side coming from behind the flowers, lighting up the petals. So that's transmitted light. So that's an example of starting to explore light quality and thinking about light direction and the softness and the hardness of light under different circumstances, all with flowers as your subject. So it really just opens up this whole world of grasping concepts and really learning all, all the essentials of photography and having a very accessible subject to do that with. So that just makes flowers a wonderful subject for for really improving your photography really quickly because the fact that they're so accessible you can start trying out these different concepts and trying different settings and start mastering the essentials you need for better photos and more professional looking photos. So now the other side too is one of the things I teach and I, I've taught this in my Easy DSLR as well as my DP Insiders is macro photography. So that's one of the things like for instance you might have a scene here where you have these these little flowers and you could just take the whole scene like this and it's obviously a splash of colors nice but it may not have the best composition you might have elements you don't want like the fence and the pole so one thing you can do is just go right in so this is actually using a macro lens now and I was isolating just the center of this flower and it just leads to a striking composition and leads to a much more interesting shot and professional looking shot rather than the more snapshot kind of view of just like a scene where you might have elements that don't really enhance the shot and are kind of distracting. So moving in is a big thing. So this leads us to our fourth point. So with flower photography, it gives you a subject to expand on your tool set and to expand on your techniques and start exploring more advanced techniques and the advanced techniques may be macro and actually I'll just jump back to the grid view and just show some of the shots I took today so I actually went out there today and I had this these flowers popping up these bulbs this is now why I decided to use macro in these scenes is because this is really close to the ground there was a lot of you know dirt and and kind of bit of grass and leaves around these but by moving way down and right into these flowers, it just gives for a much more stunning composition. And in this case, I actually cropped in too. So this is a situation where the original was actually a wider scene where you could see the edge of the petals and you could see the dark background. But you can start looking at things like cropping in on a macro shot or even taking the, 
the shot close up in the first place and this leads to more like a high key photo so you can start exploring low key and high key photography so high key meaning most of the values are are lighter and you have a lot of white in the scene and it, this leads to quite a nice composition too we're also looking at like the golden mean line sort of resting down there and also simplicity that's another composition guideline is using simplicity in your shots to really kind of create a more stunning shot because there's less distractions you're really like focused on some simple element so yeah i think that makes for effective shot now this is a wider shot of course but i what i really like here is the color contrast this you got this bright orange against this purple background it's almost it's literally popping and that's color contrast is something you find very often with flower photos yet here again is a crop right in looking at sort of a high more high key so you've got a like all the pollen building up on the flower parts there and a couple more shots now here's another example we're exploring a more advanced concept which is is which i would really consider an essential which is depth of field so now this is using a narrow aperture and actually if i call up the the values yeah let's drop out of this mode so i can show you the values on the screen okay so this is f11 so i basically narrowed down my aperture f11 trying to get more in focus in other words increasing the depth of field just so i get a little bit more than just the center of the flower i've got some of the petals in focus so that basically if you want more in focus you narrow down that aperture as opposed to this shot where i'm really going for more like an art look here so this is really almost abstract and that's the beauty of flower photography too you can start getting almost abstract shots with macro and close-ups and really shallow depth of field. So now this is probably using like about f4 and I will check that for you. Ah, f4.5. With macro photography, your depth of field gets narrower and narrower too. You're looking at razor thin depth of field, especially when you have a wider aperture like f4.5 is quite wide. So that leads to that real kind of shallow depth of field and you get that real silky blurred background which really creates for quite a quite a nice look but you still have all that color the lovely color contrast so so i'm really happy with this shot actually i, I think i might actually print this shot because i just i think it makes for a nice would make for a nice art print now, i have another example where i took something like this with a real narrow depth of field and let me go to the grid view to find that oh it's this shot here so once again a uh, very razor thin depth of field i actually do have some details in focus just a little bit of the the pollen and the stamens i guess these are and but i purposely went for quite a shallow depth of field here and giving this really it's it's all about the color with the hint of detail that's what i was looking for with this shot so it's just that really bold red color so i was right inside the flower for this shot but I think it just created this really nice artistic shot. And once again, going, you know, exploring more of an art look and more of an abstract look. I think that sort of pretty much covers flower photography and just gives you an idea of the kind of things you can get all with one subject. So here's an example of quite shallow depth of field in a field of flowers. And that's using a long lens and that's getting that shallow depth of field by actually using a long telephoto lens and a, and a wide aperture just so that this central plane of flowers are in focus which is quite effective so as you can see the background is pretty blurred here and i will show you the settings just so that you're aware so uh f 2.8 so that was the widest aperture i could have on this lens and it was actually at 130 millimeters, not at the full 200, but rel pretty high telephoto, or at least over 100 mil, plus the 2.8, leading to that quite shallow depth of field in this shot. And that pretty much wraps it up. So just wanted to give you a little bit of encouragement to go out there and try some flower photography. And if you really want a A to Z of flower photography, I definitely recommend this book by Fotzi, Leanne's Methods. And she goes way beyond what 
I've done with flowers. So I'd, like I say, I have done flower photography in my training, but it's more within certain concepts where I've used them to illustrate. Whereas Leanne in her premium guide by Fotzi goes into a lot of different techniques and she talks about different kinds of light, artificial light and when you should use it, natural light and how to get more creative with your flower photography and then she even goes into things like setups and props, things like that are handy like clothes pegs and things to really help you get that nice clear shot when you need it. And then she also go, takes it further and talks about editing and, and printing your photos, printing your flower photos. So I think it's a wonderful book. It's over 150 pages and it's really concise but goes into depth on all the key aspects you'd want to really take your flower photography to the next level. So this is about learning the basics in a real simple way because she's a teacher. She can really, you know, put put out those basics in a way that anyone can understand. She actually teaches kids, so she makes it very accessible as far as the information goes. But then she also starts talking about more advanced concepts and and the way she's broken it up into chapters makes it real easy to follow and for you to start really getting great flower photos. So if you have any concerns thinking flower photos might be a bit mundane or a bit of a common topic, she will show you how to make your flower photos really stand out so that it can be look a little different. Kind of like I did with this shot here. This was a, a shot of the tulips during the spring up at Mount Vernon. So this might be a fairly typical shot you'd see, but just thinking about composition, you can change it up a bit. And now I took a, a top-down view, and I think that led to a really interesting composition and having that color contrast too with the yellow tulips in the middle versus the red is just just an idea of how you can mix it up a bit and start expanding on your flower photography and and get more interesting results so anyway I definitely recommend Leanne's book it is on sale now so if you click the link hopefully that offer will still be available um, I had Brett send me a, a special link to send out to you so under this video you'll see the link for that and hopefully you grab that and I think you'll find it's a wonderful little guide and I definitely love the way Leanne explains things. Anyway I hope you found this video interesting whether or not you get the Fotzi book I think these points are well worth considering and if you haven't tried flower photography I definitely recommend it just to get those basics down as well as start expanding and trying out different things like macro and other types of photography. Okay, that's it for now and take care.